Welcome to another edition of Tech Tips from CMMXYZ.com. In this episode, we will discuss how to use the clearance cube. Clearance cubes are a powerful and simple way to automate the safety moves for your probe around the part. To activate the clearance cube, click the clearance cube icon on the Quick Measure toolbar. By default, the first time you use clearance cubes in a program, the clearance cube definition window will open in simple mode. Simple mode allows you to set a generic offset for the cube, and it has options to show or hide the clearance cube, an option to manually resize the clearance cube, and an option to activate or deactivate the clearance cube. The easiest way to use clearance cubes is to activate the clearance cube once your manual alignment has been completed and you've turned on DCC mode. Any new feature created with the clearance cube active is automatically added to the list of features to utilize the clearance cube. If we click on the advanced button and make sure the status tab is selected, we see a list of every feature in our program. We also have a list of features that are active for the clearance cube, set to on, or features that are not active for the clearance cube, set to off. At this point in the program, with about three features left to go, I remembered that I forgot to turn on the clearance cube. So I activated the clearance cube at this part of the program, and my remaining three features were set to on automatically. The rest of my program, however, is set to off. I need to set these features to on so then they can be used in the clearance cube for safety moves. The simplest way to do this is to grab your first feature after your manual alignment, click and hold the mouse, and drag down till you highlight all the remaining features that are set to off. When you remove the mouse button, a menu pops up, giving me a choice under active, to turn it off or on. So if I click the on button, all these features now are set to on, meaning they will utilize the clearance cube for measurement. I'm going to go ahead and click the apply button to make sure it remembers this setting. One last thing I want to point out before we activate the clearance cube is to click on the constraints tab and notice what we have for our faces options and our edges options. You'll notice they all have check marks except for a few. Under the faces, the Z minimum is not checked, as well as when we're utilizing edges to get around the part, anything that has a minus Z listed is not checked. This is going under the assumption that you will have your part on a table, and a Z minus function would cause a collision of the probe smacking into the table. These could be turned on if your part is elevated and you need to move below the part. But by default, they're disabled to save your probe from smacking to the table and causing thousands of dollars of damage. Now, to activate the clearance cube, I like using the simplest way, which is clicking the simple button. Modify my offset value if necessary. If you want to increase the value, you can hit the up arrow. You want to decrease the value, you could hit the down arrow, or you could even type in the value if you want to change it all together. Place a nice check on activate clearance cube motion, and when I hit OK, clearance cube is active for my entire program. Note, there is no command in the program anywhere that mentions anything about a clearance cube. This is because the clearance cube option is what we refer to as a global setting. Once it's turned on, it's on and inside the status component of the clearance cube will list which features are going to utilize the clearance cube. Now that the clearance cube is activated and configured for my features, let's turn on the path lines to see the actual path PCDMIS will take when measuring the part. Click on the view menu and select path lines. As you can see, PCDMIS does a pretty good job of avoiding the part and even has good clearance for any of the probe rotations. The last thing I want to focus on is these four points. Notice after each point is taken, it uses the clearance cube to move between the points. In this case, it is not really necessary to use the clearance cube as there is already good clearance point to point. 
Let me show you how to disable the clearance cube moves for these features. First, click on the clearance cube icon, select the advanced button, and click on the status tab. To modify the moves for these four features, we need to pay attention to the start, which is the clearance cube move before we measure the feature, and the end, which is the clearance cube move after the feature. Since point two is the first measurement in our program of these four points, we need to keep his start move. Just the same, the last point, point five, needs to keep his last move. It's all the moves in between we want to disable for the clearance cube. So for point two, I'm going to click on his end, use tip vector, and now I'm going to focus on the starting end face and go right down to disabling it, setting it to off. That means the clearance cube will start on point two and then stay in his vicinity when he's finished. Points three and points four, we want to completely disable both of them so we can click, drag, and highlight the start and ends for both when we release the mouse. We can select starting end face, set those to off. And then for point five, the start we want to disable as well. Click and release. Click on the start ending face and select off. What this gives us is a start move for the beginning of the four features and an end move to finish the last four features. Now we click on apply and select OK. So now we want to turn off our path lines and turn them on again to see how this visually improves from the changes that we made. So we'll go to view path lines to disable the path lines, then click view and path lines again to redraw the path lines based on the changes we've made. Now you can see between points two, three, four, and five, we now have moves that just stay in between the features and there's a nice move before point two and a nice move after point five. And that is your crash course on using clearance cubes. My name is Stuart Burke for CMMXYZ.com. Thank you for watching.